Yo, yo, Algebraniacs! Welcome to the Johnson Kedro Mini Hour! But it's not an hour! Well, today we're going to talk about <laughs> section 2.1, which is relations and functions. Don't forget the word fun. Are we going to have fun? We are. I'm already having fun. <laughs> All right, we got to take care of some vocabulary here. we got relation, which doesn't mean your Aunt Jemima or your Uncle Joe. It means a set of ordered pairs of input and output values. And we'll talk about it, whether it's a function or not a little bit later, but here we are. And there's an example of a relation. It's just a list of X and Y ordered pairs there. All right. Inputs and outputs. Seems easy enough. Now the domain is actually the inputs. When you think of your T chart, we always put our X values in and then we get our outputs as our Y's. So, yeah, and we did that in chapter one, remember with those patterns we right. made those two charts? So domain is your X values and the range is actually your Y values. And if you have trouble with that, X comes before Y because I know the alphabet. Yes, you do. And B comes before R. Yes, it does. I was having some alphabetical troubles earlier. Yes, we won't expound on those. Yeah. All right, we got a fancy schmancy little chart here talking about temperature of the water. But let's see, January is 68, February 70, that is not Michigan. <laughs> so, but we can, uh, we're going to represent this information in three different ways. The first way is a mapping diagram. I'm going to go, if you were given these in, uh, as numbers, you would want to go in numerical order. So we're going to go in alphabetical order. Oh, okay. So, so A is April. first, and then February, yeah. and then January, mm -hmm. and then what's left? March. March. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then numbers in numerical order on the other side, so 68, 70, 75, and 78. And the purpose of the mapping diagram is to show what matches up with what. All right, so April actually goes with 78. So make sure you draw an arrow, and it matters that the arrow goes to the range values. All right, and then February is 70. March 75 and January 68. That's a mapping diagram. Cool. All right, ordered pairs. It's pretty simple. We just do an X and a Y value. Our X's are the months, so J can go with 68. F goes with Oops. 70. M goes 75. April A goes with 78. Okay. Beautiful. Then graphing. Now we're just doing a regular old graph. So January 68 is about there. Oh, Maybe. that's not very good. February. This is hard to do. I'm all zoomed in. Let me zoom out here. Ah. There we go. Okay. So January was 68. 68. Okay. And then look how big those are. 70, 75. Okay. February 70. 70. 75. For March. 78. 78, so about right there. Very good. Um, do I want to connect the dots here? I don't think so. Okay, we just, don't know. That's the average for the whole month, so we don't know. Okay, so just for a um, <coughs> relation, you're just going to put almost like a scatter plot. Right, so do not connect the dots. dots. All right, so, now we have another word is a function. So we said sometimes relations are functions and sometimes they're not. Right. So? But we always know that functions are fun. That's right. There you go. Okay, so to be a function, the first thing is each x is paired with only one y. Each x is with only one y. Right. Okay. Next. Each, well, well that, that means that each input creates only one output. So I have a little trick for this. All right, you ready hear for it. My mad art skills. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay, so this is a machine. Wow. <laughs> Looks like a space age <laughs> toilet to me, but keep going. One time you called them United States machines because they looked like Oh, look like the United video. States. The kids oh, will see yeah. that later on. The okay. I see Florida there. So to be a function, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what this is. <laughs> That's the Canada. Yeah. Canada. <laughs> Anyway, all right, so to be a function, you put in one input, the same math is going on in here, and it puts out the same output. Okay. Okay, so that means if you put, uh, for instance, if you put a 2 in as an x, and you get a 5 out, 
for it to be considered a function, the next time you put a 2 in, it better output a 5. Uh, okay. And if it doesn't, then it is not a function. Yes. Now I have a visual to remember that. That's very good. All right. Uh, later, we'll talk about this on a graph. You can use the vertical line test. We're essentially testing for that same thing here, but it's just a, not a visual way to do that. Gotcha. So all domain right. and range, let's do that first. So domain is all my x values. Now I see two ones there, but we only put it down once. once. Yep, and it's very helpful if you do numerical order. So one, mm -hmm. and then what? that takes care of both of these. And then we got to do threes next, and then it just goes four, five, right? All right, yep. So just a list. Well, that's not a very good curly bracket. And then for the range, we got the y's. So what's in there? Uh, the lowest one is a two, two, and a three. Okay, three is next. Five and seven. Two fives, we don't need to write it twice, and a seven. So that's domain and range. And then I'm going to get rid of this wonderful piece of artwork. And we'll do the last part. So we're trying to decide, is it a function? <laughs> and to do that, what we're looking for is to see if at any point we have the same x paired with two different ooh, 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 I see it. Where do you a see one it? and a one. Okay, so here in my little machine, a one goes in and a three comes out. So that means the next time we put a 1 in, it should be a 3 and it's not. Oh. So that means that this is no fun. No fun cushion. Not a fun cushion. Okay. Well, that seems pretty easy. Um, your book is also going to talk about the mapping diagrams, how to decide if it's a function. And you guys are welcome to use these too. So if you think about, here are my domains, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here's 2, 3, 5, 7. The way the mapping diagram works is you draw lines from your x's to your y's. So a 1 goes with a 3, and a 1 also goes with a 5. Oh, so if you have a double arrow... Right. It's got to split off bad. like that. Gotcha. Um, and then you would fill in the others as well. But that's another way to do it. I think we've got another one. Ooh. All right, so here, coming up with the uh, domain, what do you think? 1, 3... Four, five. Okay, so just picking out the x values. And then for the range? Uh, the lowest is a 2, and a 3, 5, 7. All right, is it a function? Well, I see two 3s in the x position, and they both have 5. So okay. that's legal. That's allowed. Um, so I think we're good. Yeah. So yes, it is a function. I have a question. Are we good with this? Yeah. Okay, I have a question. What if we had this? There's the same lies. Okay, but if you think of your function machine, if I put a 2 in, i got to get a 5 out. If I put a 3 in, I have to get a 5 out also. That's okay. Okay, so it's okay to have repeating y yeah. values. It's just when we have repeating x's that aren't with different y's. Right. Okay. Right. Okay, that makes Only sense. Only goes with the x's. And if you look at the mapping diagram for that, that's going to look like this. They're pointing to the same y over here. That's okay. You don't have a double arrow from Correct. the x. Correct. That's going to look like that to be not. Gotcha. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other way to tell, and this would be easier if you were given a graph, is a vertical line test. So how does that work? So if we graph all the points that were given, and then you got to see if the graph uh, touches it more than once. So the vertical line. Vertical is up and down. Yeah, cool. Okay, so let's do an example. So what you do, you imagine drawing a vertical line or having a vertical line. There we go and you slide it across your paper. Stop. There we go. And if at any point it touches your graph more than once. Not a function. Okay, and it's not a function. No fun. Okay. And also, if you think about this, I like to think about why it works out that way. The x-coordinate at my bottom point that I have there, that's negative 2, negative 2. 
and the y coordinate is negative 2, 8. What do you notice about oh, those? Oh, same y, but different output. Or same x, but different output. Right, so that's why our vertical line test works. But it's just simpler when you have a graph to yep. do it this way. And now I move my graph. Okay, here we go. Next one. Hmm, I don't see this hitting more than once. So it touches once all the way through. That means it is Yay. a... Very fun. Cool. Alrighty. Next. Okay, this time we're going to write it out like an equation with a model. Uh, it says write a function to model the cost. You are buying a pizza dinner, which includes a drink. Each pizza slice is $1.50 and the drink is 2 Alright, so let's first write the model. So what are the var variables representing? We don't know what. How many pieces of pizza? Okay, so slices. And then remember f of x is just like y, so the function of x. So once we find out how many slices we have, what are we going to discover? How much money it costs, which is the y value. Okay. Alright, so f of x is just like y. That is equal to... Now if the drink, I'm only going to get one drink because I get free refills, so I don't need to buy more than one. So that's two bucks no matter what. So that's not attached to a variable. Right. But the one I don't know about is how many pieces of pizza. And that's $1.50 per, per slice. Per multiply. And we're going to use X for number of slices. Okay. So this is the model. That's the first answer. The next thing it asks is to evaluate the cost for three pieces of pizza. That means if you plug in three for X, how much do you spend? Order of operations, where do we start? Uh, multiply $1.50 times three, 450 plus two bucks. Six dollars and 50 cents. Perfect. That's the second thing. And answer. you get a full tummy. Cool. Oh, you want to know what? We did, uh, I think we did a slide out of order here. Oops, we were supposed to do this beforehand. This will make a lot more sense now, probably. Yeah. Okay, function notation. Okay, so we have two different versions here. We have y equals 3x or f of x equals 3x. They mean the same thing, but why do we write it like the left hand, or I'm sorry, the right hand side's one? They have inputs and outputs. And the x re represents the input, what you're plugging and stuff in. Right, so the red is your input, and the f of x stands for the output, then, the green part. Right. Here's an example. Yeah, so you just treat it like you see the x here, and this is the x because it's in, it's next to the f. So treat it just like that. So finding f of 3 means use this as an input value. So in your equation, you just replace anywhere you see an x value, yep. and then you simplify. So what is 3 plus 5? 32. <laughs> oh! Just kidding. JK. All right, I have a question. At the end, does this mean I have to divide by 3? No, 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 no. Oh, so many that people... F of 3 just tells you what your answer is when you put in a 3. Right. What this really means in math language is when you plug in 3, y equals. Right. Um, a lot of kids think that's multiplication, mm. and it's not. Yeah, the F in front means function. Function of 3. When you use that as an input. Let's do another one. Okay. Log it in. Wait, this is a G. Yeah, it's F's and G's are used quite a bit. Um, Does sometimes it an H. It doesn't. You just got to be careful that you're not making it multiplication. Well, and sometimes your book will give you more than one equation, and they'll label them with the different letters. Right. So that helps keep track. All right, so I substituted. I took the, the X. I'm glad you put parentheses in there with that negative 6. Oh, yeah. You taught me that. Good. All right. Yeah. What do we do for order of operations? Uh, exponents first. So negative six time or times itself square is just a thirty-six. And it's positive. Right. All and right. then three times thirty-six is nine hundred eight. Yep. Minus one is one hundred seven. Oh, I forgot something. Uh, so our answer for g of negative six is one hundred seven. We are supposed to write it as an ordered pair. So the uh, input value and then the output value. Oh, so that, I forgot that was it's kind of your x and so y. Okay, so instead of this as our final answer, you're going to write it like this. Oh, well, that's.
Pretty easy. Yeah, just whatever you plugged in. Because three was the X you used, and eight was your answer, and that's what X and Y. All right, I think we're really done now. All right, ta-ta. Yes.